Hey guys, Right Trappers here, and today I'm going to show you how you can update the BIOS on a Gigabyte motherboard. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying the updated BIOS files to a USB stick, plugging the USB stick into the back of the motherboard, and then booting into the BIOS, and then updating the BIOS from the files that are on the USB stick. So you're going to need a USB stick that doesn't have any data on it that you want, as we're going to be reformatting it and it only needs to be large enough to store the BIOS update files, which are typically only a few megabytes. So now we've gone over that, the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out exactly what model of motherboard you have. So an easy way to do that is to come to start and search for run. Then in run, you then want to type msinfo32, and you want to click OK. Now in the system information, you then want to come to where it says baseboard manufacturer and baseboard product. So the baseboard manufacturer tells you who manufactures your motherboard and the baseboard product should be your model of motherboard. So as you can see, my motherboard is manufactured as you would expect by Gigabyte and it is the B550 ARS Elite AXV2. Now if it doesn't list your motherboard model in here, you can always go to your motherboard manual to figure out exactly what model of motherboard you have. Now once you know exactly what model of motherboard you have, you would then need to come to the support page for that model of motherboard. So if I open up Chrome, as you can see, I already have it opened up, but you just need to come to gigabyte.com and you need to find your exact model of motherboard. So as you can see, I am currently on the page for the B550 ARS Elite AXV2, as that is the model of motherboard that I have. Now, as you can see, there are multiple revisions of the motherboard. It is quite likely there will be multiple revisions for your motherboard, so you will need to figure out exactly which revision you have for your motherboard. Now in order to do that, you will need to physically look at your motherboard and find a revision label on it. So if I just come to the image here, just to show you an example, in this image here, in the top left corner, as you can see, it says Rev 1.0. So that is the revision version of the board in this image. So you need to find somewhere on the board where it says Rev to tell you what revision number you have, if there are multiple revision versions of your motherboard model. Now, obviously, they have not updated the picture for each revision, as this says revision 1.0, when I have the revision 1.2 slash 1.3 selected. But obviously you need to make sure that you are on the page for your exact motherboard model, along with the correct revision version. So once you've made sure you have the information correct, you then want to come to the support section. And then in the support section, you then want to scroll down to the BIOS section. And as you can see, there are currently two BIOSes available for the motherboard. So currently my motherboard is running FB, and we're going to be updating to FC. As you can see, it is much newer, now you also need to make sure that the newer version of the BIOS supports your CPU, as in some cases a new BIOS can have older CPUs removed from them in order to make space to support newer CPUs. So you just need to check the CPU support list for the new BIOS version that you're going to install, making sure that your CPU is on the list. So to download the files, we're just going to click the download button here, and that will download a zip file of the BIOS update files. So if I just come to the desktop, I will bring the zip file over, so now we have the zip file, we're now going to need to get our USB. So I just have a SanDisk USB here, and we're going to plug it into the computer. So if I just come to this PC, as you can see, it is a 232GB USB, which is much larger than we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to be formatting the USB to the FAT32 file format, as that is what the motherboard is able to read. Now if your USB is 32GB or lower, then you should be able to easily format it to FAT32. All you need to do is right click on the USB, click format, and then select FAT32 in the file system, and then click start to start the format. Now just to reiterate, if there is any data on the USB, it will be wiped. So you do not want to do this on a USB that has data on it that you want to keep. Now alternatively, if you have a USB that is larger than 32GB, like mine is, then we're going to need to create a partition that is 32GB, and then format that to FAT32. So to do that, we're just going to come to search, and we're going to search disk part. And we're going to open up the create and format hard disk partitions. And then in the disk management, you then want to find your USB stick. So the easiest way to figure that out is to just unplug the USB, and then plug it back in and see which disk reappears. So as you can see, disk 2 is my USB stick. Now once you've made sure you have the correct disk selected for your USB, 
We're then just going to right click on it and we're going to click delete volume. Now once you click yes, that will wipe all of the data off the USB and remove all of the partitions. So again, make sure you have nothing on it that you want to keep. So now if we click yes, that will remove all of the data and remove all of the partitions. So now it is unallocated. And we're now just going to right click on it and click new simple volume. Then we will click next in the wizard. And we're now going to create a new simple volume that is just under 32 gigabytes. So to do that, we're going to create a 32,000 megabyte partition. So if I just enter 32,000 in for the volume size, and I then click next, and then you can select whatever drive letter you want. I'm just going to leave it on the default one that it selects for me. So that is going to be F. And now importantly, you need to change the file system from whatever it is on. So mine is currently on NTFS. We're going to change it to FAT32. Now once we have the FAT32 file system selected, you can then give it whatever label you want. I'm just going to name it BIOS Update. And then we will click Next. And we will click Finish. So now that has created us a 31.25 gigabyte partition that is in the FAT32 format. So now we have a USB that is FAT32. We can now copy the BIOS files over to it. So if we open up our USB and we then open up our zip file and we just select all of the files in the zip and we copy them across to the USB. And there we go, we now have our BIOS files on the USB stick. And as it is FAT32, the motherboard should be able to access the files on the USB. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to check that there isn't a specific part that you need to have your USB stick plugged into. So if I open the page up for the motherboard again, and I click on manual, and then you want to select the manual for your language. So I have it pre-opened here. And you want to make sure on the back panel connectors there isn't a specific USB port that you should be plugging the USB into to update the BIOS. Now it's probably hard for you to see, these are labelled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and so on. Now the USB port labelled F is the USB port that I'm going to be using. Now I believe it should be able to work with any of the USB ports, but if we come down to F, as you can see that is this one. And this says that this is the USB port that needs to be used for QFlash Plus. Now we're not going to be using QFlash Plus, we're going to be using QFlash. However, I'm still going to plug the USB into the USB port anyway, as that seems to be the one that it should definitely work on. Now once you've had a look and made sure there isn't a specific part that you need to plug into, or if there is, you know which one that is, we now need to go into the BIOS. So the easiest way to go into the BIOS is just to come to start, then come to power, and then hold down the shift key on the keyboard, and click restart. That should then provide us with these options here, where we can click on troubleshoot, then advanced options, and then we can select UEFI firmware settings. And then we can click restart, and that should then boot us up into the BIOS. Now if you don't have those options, instead you're going to need to figure out which function keys you need to press on boot up to boot your motherboard into the BIOS. Again, that should be listed somewhere in your manual, or you can usually find it online somewhere. So now as you can see, we're now in the BIOS. So what we need to do is we need to plug our USB stick in. So I'm just going to go plug my USB stick into the USB port that we've been over previously. Right, so now the USB has been plugged into the motherboard, we now need to come to QFlash in the BIOS. So as you can see down here, we can either click on Q flash, or we can press F8 on the keyboard. It may look a little different depending on your motherboard, but you just need to be able to find the Q flash option. So if I click on Q flash, as you can see, we now have the USB option, and we can click here to update the BIOS through the USB. So I'll just click here. It will then open up the file page, and here we need to select our USB. So if we come down here to the arrow, you then need to find your USB in the list. So as you can see, mine is down here. And once you've found your USB in the list, you just need to click on it. And then on the right hand side, it should show you the BIOS files inside of your USB. So as you can see, we have our BIOS file here that ends in .fc, as fc is the BIOS version. So now we need to select the BIOS file. And then we're going to click the right arrow over here. Now it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to update your BIOS? 
Now it's important that during the update process you do not lose power to your computer, so make sure that nothing else is going on that is going to potentially cause power to be lost to your computer. And once you've made sure that your computer is not going to lose power, you can then click yes to start the BIOS update. So if I click yes, it now starts checking the BIOS file, and now it's finished checking the BIOS file, we can now press here to start. So it is now flashing the updated BIOS, and now it's finished flashing it, it now reboots itself, and there we go, the computer has now rebooted. I will just boot back into the BIOS to show you that it has updated. So now I'm booted back into the BIOS, as you can see my BIOS version has now changed from FB to FC, so that flash has been successful. Now you may need to change settings such as XMP back, and turn things such as virtualization on if you previously had those options on, as your BIOS will likely have set itself back to the default settings when the new BIOS was flashed. So guys, that's how you can update your BIOS on a Gigabyte motherboard. If you liked the video, don't forget the like button. If you decide to hit the dislike button, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you another time. Bye.